Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the last large battle of the Western Front that did not use the iconic trenches of the First World War. Today we'll talk about the First Battle of the Marne, fought between Germany, France, and the United Kingdom, located near the Marne River on September 6th through the 12th, 1914. For several weeks now, the German armies had worked together as a cohesive unit and pushed the French and British armies back, exhausting both sets of troops at the speed of the retreat. In the beginning of September, both sides believed the next large battle would be in Paris. French command was preparing the last defenses of Paris, but realized they would not be able to withstand an attack from the German forces for very long. They decided that the best defense was a good offense. French General and Chief of Staff and recurring character to the series, General Joseph Joffrey and others decided they would attempt to stop the Germans before Paris. They had the advantage. After the retreat back to Paris, their supply lines would be much shorter than the advancing Germans. In addition, they were alerted of the German army approach by French air reconnaissance and radio intercepts. This was the first time that air reconnaissance and radio intercepts had been used in a major conflict. The exhaustion on both sides of the already 150-mile retreat was felt. Even with desperation, though, it took General Joffrey some time to convince the British forces to help with his plan. The mission was put into motion on September 6 as General Michel Mannery, commander of the 150,000 men from the French 6th Army, met General Kluck's German's 1st Army in battle. General Kluck, in an attempt to maneuver, moved away from the German 2nd Army in order to take on the French attackers. What was not realized by the German command was that this would leave more than a 30-mile gap between the German 1st and 2nd Armies. General Kluck had the advantage and had almost defeated General Mannery's French 6th Army when an unexpected 6,000 French troops arrived from Paris to help the French. The unusual aspect of this was that these reinforcements arrived in more than 630 taxi cabs from Paris. Not only did survival on this day of the French 6th Army rely on civilian taxi cabs, it was also the first time in battle that reinforcements had arrived in an automotive vehicle. Prior to this, troop transport was done with train, by foot, or on cart. While the battle was raging, another returning character, General Louis Franchet d'Esprit, French 5th Army, and British Field Marshal John French's British Expeditionary Force pushed against that 30-mile gap located between the two German armies. Utilizing the surprise move and the confusion at their sudden appearance, the Frenchmen attacked General Bulow's 2nd German Army. The fickle winds of fate had unexpectedly turned in favor of France and the United Kingdom as the Germans began to be pushed back. On September 9th, in desperation to avoid complete defeat, the Germans performed an organized withdrawal intending to regroup at the Eisney River. The desperation and tension were so high, it is said that the overall German commander, General Helmut von Moltke, suffered a breakdown and his subordinates had to organize the retreat. The autumn rain had begun, and on September 11th, everything had become mud. Movement for either side was slowed down to a crawl as man and horse and vehicle vainly flailed in the deep mud. This slowed the German retreat down, but by September 12th, the Germans had finally reached the bank of the Eisney River and began to build fortifications. The battle was officially over. This was the beginning of the trenches that the war is most known for. This is also where the British and French forces did not follow up. Instead, they allowed the Germans to start digging a series of trench networks over the next two months. Neither side thought this would be a permanent setup, though. Both believed this would just be a temporary defensive fortification until the next big push. Instead, both sides on the Western Front would use the trenches for the remainder of the war. The total casualties of the fight were 213,445 French, including 18,073 killed, 111,963 wounded, 83,409 missing. The United Kingdom suffered 12,733 casualties in total, including 1,700 dead. While the Germans had lost 67,700 men killed, 182,300 men wounded, captured, or missing. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.